So let's talk about Q in the Cloudera Data Platform with the 718 release. Hi, I'm David Dickman. I'm a product manager here at Cloudera, focusing on SQL and end user experiences. So, what's new in Hue with this release? First, we fixed some major critical vulnerabilities. We want to make sure that Cloudera is as secure as it can be, so we resolved known CVEs for over 35 critical or high CVEs in the Hue environment. And this is making it more secure for our customers. The other thing we've done is we've added features that for our Hortonworks customers who are using the Data Analytics Studio, you may find quite familiar, but now they're available in Hue. These include the Job Browser, the Query Explorer, and the Troubleshooting, allowing us to compare, contrast, and troubleshoot our queries and jobs as they run. What we've also done is taken Hue and modernized it, integrating it and making it easier to manage for the entire Cloudera Data Platform. So first on modernization, we have a modern supported infrastructure around Python 3 and latest Django releases and modernize our security standards. We've also improved our administration with better user access logging, rolling restarts to streamline our updates, and high availability and disaster recovery with SQL. And finally, on our Cloudera Data Platform integration, We've integrated to the data catalog, which means that you can now find data that's outside your own database catalog using the entire Cloudera data cloud catalog across the hybrid cloud. We've also added new languages, dialects, and syntaxes. Data engineers can now enjoy Spark 3 SQL snippets sent via Livy 3. For our operational database customers, you can use Phoenix SQL, which includes not only querying, but also the data description language and data manipulation language. For our Open Data Lakehouse customers, we now support Iceberg syntax in all supported engines. And for our data warehouse users, we've eased migration from traditional databases using Hive HPL SQL support so you can now define those stored procedures directly in Hue. And when it comes to supportability, we listened to our customers. We listened to you to improve supportability and overall satisfaction by closing over 22 different topics related to user experience, performance, stability, and more. So now let's take a look at how all of this actually works in Hue. So here we're in Hue, and let's talk about the Spark SQL Editor. So first, under the editor, you would make a choice for Spark SQL. This sets our dialect, and it also sets everything we use for the autocomplete and syntax checking and everything that is going to make this a nice experience. So here what we're doing is using the uh, data description language to create a table. So we use using DDL, do a create table, and then we're going to insert some data into this table. So now we have something to play with in our SQL edit. Now that that's complete, we can go ahead and start playing around with some of this. We can also use the view on the right-hand side here to give us a peek at the different data and data types that are in this table using the right assist. You can also go to the table browser and look at all of the details of the table in the Hue table browser view. We can also look at it on the left assist. And here we see our list of tables. We can click on the information icon and this will also show us some sample data and the description of the table, the columns, the data types. And here we see the table name column that's in it, and some sample data. So let's go ahead and run this select statement. And here we see the results, everything executed correctly. And now let's navigate over to the table browser. So still connected to the Spark SQL database, we can change our table dialect to Spark SQL, focus just on those that are visible to that. Here's the table we created, and here is its details. You see the column. We see the properties, we see where it's stored. We can look at the sample data, we can look at additional details. Table type, the statistics on the table, the properties on the table, its storage location, everything we'd need to know to completely understand how this table is defined. We can also execute the drop table right from the table browser if we want, or we can run a query against it. We select the query button. It pre-fills a select all from with a limit of 100. 
so we can get a quick view of sample data. So this is another nice shortcut to be able to go and query any table to get a little more information about it, a little more detail than just what a few sample rows might tell us. He also gives us the opportunity to understand what's going on. We see a little warning here. And it tells us this query is taking a little longer than expected to execute. No worries. We know it'll complete. And there's our result set. Now, the second thing I'd like to share with you is how we can troubleshoot some of what we've just experienced. So again, we'll go to Hue. And the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to configure Hue to be able to start processing the telemetry that comes from running queries. Now, we're going to be using Hive in this context, but the latest versions of Hue also include support for Impala. So let's go to Actions, Add Service. And here you'll see the service we want to add is the Hue Query Processor. What this is going to do is this is going to capture and store all of the query telemetry in a way that Hue can then allow us to visualize that, understand it, compare it, and use it for debugging and troubleshooting experiences. So what we'll also need to do is go into Hue and configure. So we'll go to the query processor and ensure that it is turned on for the Hue service. So that particular Hue will have visibility to the telemetry sent by the Hue query processor. And now we can go into Hue and see what this actually looks like. In Hue, you'll see that under the job browser on the left navigation, we can go up and take a look at all of the queries. These are all the queries that are running against this particular database that is being seen by this same Hue. So the same database we're connected to. Hue is looking at all the queries that are being sent to it. Now, this is controlled by different privileges. So I'm in as administrator so I can see every query. We can also quickly scope the range to a particular set if we're looking for a particular query that was run in the past that may be interesting to understand or maybe troublesome and we want to to troubleshoot it we can go ahead and look, uh, look back in the past click on any query and we can look at the details we see the information we see a visual explain of the plan we see the timeline and the various stages as it goes through its execution and we can also take a look at the query configuration here we see all of the details available about this query. And we can download that to an external file for further analysis in comparison to other queries. Let's take a look at a different query. In this query, we're going to take a look at the data analytic graph, which is additional detail available for this particular type of query. Here's your DAG info, the DAG flow, the DAG swim lane, and DAG counters. We can also look at the data analytics graph configuration. And this may also be downloaded as well. Now, wouldn't it be great if we can compare two queries? Simply select any two queries and hit the compare button. What we see now is a side-by-side -side comparison. Everything from the information around the query, how long it took to execute, when it was executed, what the SQL itself looks like, if there's any changes in parameters. We can also compare the timeline and see where the difference in time and execution is coming from. We can look at the details of the data analytics graph, look at the counters, see how much information has been read, how many bytes of data have been read, if there's a difference there, perhaps relating to the change in performance of these queries. And finally, when it comes to troubleshooting, we can dig into every query Take a look at any query that didn't execute correctly and look at what was causing the errors or challenges with that query. And finally, let's talk about the new support for Phoenix. This is yet another SQL dialect that is now available in Hue for our OpDB users, for folks who want to use the Phoenix SQL to query against their HBase environments. So very similar to what we have in the Hue Spark SQL, we have the ability to do data description language, data manipulation language, and run queries. So what we need to do is select Phoenix from our editor list. So we use the Phoenix dialect, the Phoenix autocomplete, and Phoenix syntax checking. Let's go ahead and run some data description language, do a create table, and now we have something to play with. We'll go ahead and do some upserts. 
the upsert is a uh, unique syntax to our HBase and Phoenix environment. So we'll insert these values into our table. We see these are now executing. So now we have a table with some data in it. We can query that table and look at the results that are now stored in our HBase environment. And there you have it, support for the Phoenix dialect as well. So these are all the new features that we've introduced with Q in the 718 release. Thank you for your time, and please enjoy your use of you.